qualifying experience sets you above and beyond the mistakes that you've made in your life. So if you wanted to get something expunged off of your record, remember I was one with uh, convicted of four felonies um, and it was very difficult for me to prove myself and to come back to where I am today. But in coming back, what took place was I was seen as more an asset to the community than a liability. So then I went to the powers that run my community and the state of Ohio certified me to qualify myself to do what I need to do after healing. And that healing is very important. So complaining about what is on your record, complaining about not being able to get housing, complaining about not being able to, you know, get on different programs because of your past experiences is no more. We know that in a society of what we live today, we have more of an opportunity to get up and represent ourselves, showing independently that we have what it takes to move ourselves to other levels, to newer levels, to vibrate higher. And that's what this podcast is all about. Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 87. We are in November 25th, 2023. Grateful that you're here. I'm so glad that we have our podcaster uh, client base on the conference. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let's go into asking the rough questions about how do you take someone who has really made a big, huge mistake in their lives, whether it's they've jumped the gun and gotten into a relationship and then realized that they're dealing with someone who is unequally yoked to them, or that they have someone who is an employer who is very devastating. It's it's draining to even get up to go to work, but you know you need the money, so you got to go. So we're going to talk about how you can build yourself from that point, because it's not always easy. It's not always easy to go into the areas of how do I make this work for me? even though I'm in the midst of the chaos and I'm in the midst of the storm. Sometimes, even people who are incarcerated, you know, sometimes I sat back and I looked at the time and I looked at the time that I spent while doing what I was, you know, chosen to do while incarcerated and being an assistant to those powers that move the establishment to make it successful so people can go in, do their time, and not worry about all of the hate and animosity and jealousy and envy, even, you know, past histories of those relationships within the CO and the prisoner status. That is very vital during those times. So it's kind of like you better go in there with clean slates you know, a clean slate, no dirty hands, because the people you meet on the street that you do wrong will probably be there. They'll probably be in that system. So basically, looking at how I could elevate myself during this chaotic moment, I recognized that I needed to get to work. I needed to use the time and not allow the time to use me. So serving that time it awakened a lot of conscious ability within me. It built the stamina. It let me see that uh, my discernment was on point. Those who I chose to be around versus those that I did not choose to be around. And it made life simpler. It made it easier for the situation in which I put myself in. I don't blame anyone for putting me there. I, I blame me. You know, so no one did that time but me. So when you turn around and you sit back and you say, I did this because of a consequence of my behavior, I'm going to deal with the consequence. Complaining is not a part of that. 
And as you recognize that you are grateful for every opportunity, because the opportunity is what what got me through the time to to be you know to have served it got me through because i said to myself well it could be a hell of a lot worse i could have been at another institution people going wild crazy da 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 da, da. but i am grateful and in everything if we are grateful what happens is we get more of that gratitude we get more of it from the universe the universe will begin to say, oh, she's grateful. She wants more of it. Let me give her more of that gratitude. But see, sometimes people come in and they try to, you know, distract you from being grateful. They put their circumstances in your way for you not to understand what's going on. And if you don't understand what's going on, then you're going to fall into the trap every time of complaining, of disassociating yourself from the reality that, yes, people are going to be who they are, especially adults. Adults are going to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. And even our millennial teenagers and and uh, uh, junior high students, <laughs> they're, they're doing what they want to do too. Some of them, they fake it to make it just to let you see a little bit but if they're not getting what they want, they're having a rebellion. They're going to rebel. You know, so be mindful of that. And don't be responsible for an adult's decision. You know, even in biblical text, it says, I've only loaned your children to you for a brief, brief moment. So raise them the way you show them the way. And when they choose to depart or they see, and then the the statement says, raise a child in a way that they should go. And when they're older, they won't depart from it. Sometimes they do depart from it. Even when you've raised them the way that they know they should be raised. They know that you get up every morning, you, you make your bed, you take a shower, you eat your breakfast, you clean your house and you go to work, you know, whatever your processes is for how you were raised. Okay. And then you take that, that opportunity and you say, oh, I ain't going to make my bed up today. What happens is that becomes a pattern of behavior. The same pattern that was taught is now being untaught by the, the lack of practice. So in that lack of practice, what do you do? You sit back and you say, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And then it becomes, you, you know, then here comes the slacker mentality. So putting ourselves in a position that we're in, when things fall apart in our lives, we put ourselves there no matter what we do. You know, look at those people who got into relationships and got into marriages and they knew good and damn well, these people gave red flags. I know I was an example of a marriage of a red flag the very night before, the very night before the wedding. And it goes to show us what are we willing to deal with because that set the stage for everything else. Oh, we're embarrassed. We spent all this money. We got the venue. We got all this stuff. All these people. We've invited 50, 60 people and we don't want to look <laughs> like something is wrong, you know? Wow. Then we sit back and blame the other person. This is the part that gets me. We sit back and blame the other person for being the person that destroyed our lives when we have the ultimate choice to say, I don't want to do this. That's why I say, you know, nobody can hold a torch to the blame game of even, even, you know, any day that I've ever dealt with a chaotic moment in my life. No one can hold a torch to be the person that I blame for having a bad day or a bad moment. I blame me in every instance. And that's something entrepreneurs, I need you to understand that even though you're healing and you're, see, I've gone through the healing process. So I understand that this is what it is. 
as we heal, we move in, in a different way. We do not sit back and pull ourselves to the degree where we say, oh, well, my husband beat me every day. So that's the reason why I turned around and I hurt him. No, you get out of the relationship. That's the reason why. And a lot of domestic disputes, and I've seen it in, while I was incarcerated, a lot of women who took that upon themselves and and did um, harm their perpetrator, it was be, and and they ended up get given time is because they could have walked away. They were the perpetrator. They allowed themselves to be victimized. They allowed themselves to be, you know, put in a position to have to fight for something that if they had to walk away or remove themselves from really early on, they never would have been in that situation to begin with. So these are things that are vital when we're talking about complaining. (laughs) You know, complaining does not help anything. If you complain, yes, you complain to yourself, go in the shower, take a shower and start talking to yourself, complaining about everything that's going wrong in your world, everything. Tell yourself and your higher power everything because most people don't need to know all the weaknesses that surround you right then because people can take advantage and know that you're vulnerable and move you into a position you're not even trying to go in even in in a unconscious state. (laughs) You're not even trying to go there. So what you have to do is learn how to maneuver that circumstance to benefit you. And then after you're done with all the complaining, write it in a journal. If you don't want someone to know, tear it up, throw it away, burn it up, do whatever, bury it. But whatever you do, get it off your chest. And then go into the mode of healing. How am I going to heal myself from this situation? I know this is a situation so much to the point that I made it a conversation with me. So how do I now take that and work on it and heal myself from it so that I can benefit and learn something from this? That is a vital and hard thing to do, especially when we're not even used to being responsible and accountable because we're blaming others. Look at this. Look at that. Here's the proof. But no, the proof is in the truth. And the truth is most people don't just wake up one day after 10 years and say that you're this hoarder. You're this manipulator. You're this narcissist. You're this whatever. No, it's been going on all the time. And you, you, you have decided to allow it to take place. And in allowing it to take place, you now have had enough. Hmm. That sounds like a relationship issue where people fell in love with this person and thought that they could change them. Then they realized a year later that, um, oh, okay, I like her body shape or I like his physique. So what I can do is he can get married to me and or he can be in a relationship with me. And then what I can do is change him. So I'm going to start, you know, uh, going to the gym and he's going to go to the gym or she's going to go to the gym and we're going to be this beautiful power couple. Okay. Physically <clears throat> only to find out that they're not going to the gym. They don't want to go to the gym. They want to eat whatever they want to eat. They want to live however they want to live, and you're not going to change them. Now you're stuck. You're the one going to the gym. So your trainer is the physiquer that you're looking for in your mate, only to find out that now you got to step outside your relationship because you're not happy with the way you made the choice to commit to someone who you didn't even appreciate the value and validity in who they were from the very beginning. So you lied to yourself. That person did not lie to you. That person came as real and as true and as honorable as they could. And they just fell into your trap. So being mindful of why we're complaining when we do, 
We have to sit back and look at us. Were we at a point where we felt that somebody else would have lifted us up and made us feel better than we could make ourselves feel? Because that's another issue. That's another complaint that comes with you know, how we do things. I know this is not talking on an entrepreneurial level, but it is because you can have this relationship. I'm sure every one of us, entrepreneurs, leaders, I'm sure every one of us has gone through something that I'm speaking about today. So I want you to take this time. I want you to meditate. I want you to really, really get in tune with you. And I want you to really ask yourself the question, where did I put all of these situations of chaos in my life to where I feel so overwhelmed at this point in my life. Because when you can do that, then you can start to heal. You can start to work on bettering yourself. So I thank you for being committed. I thank you for being consistent. I thank you for being on time because you know what? You're the best person walking in the shoes you're rocking. So don't let nobody take that away and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Whether you got to walk in them shoes and they're a little tight today, go save up to go to the store and get you a new pair. Okay? But you're the one that's rocking in those shoes. So hold your head up as high as you can. And don't let anyone you know, tell you that you're the reason for whatever is going on. You be accountable for yourself so you won't have to be told that you're the reason for this and you're the reason for that because there's so much more to this life. And the more the more we are grateful, the more abundance comes. Remember the seeds that we plant in that rich, nurturing soil, that soil that is going to build us up as we continue to move through this journey is the very thing that's going to propel those weeds away. You know, you know, sometimes we got to put in that extra, you know, fertilizer or that extra, you know, uh, natural ingredient in order to see the soil turn over into richness so that we can begin to plant for the harvest. And that's what we're doing it for. Every one of us is taking that time to better our lives in some way, shape, or form because we want to be better. We want to do it better. So when you want to do it better, start making it happen. Peace, and we'll see you next time.